Okay, good morning class. Today we have Q&A. Let me give you some words on your speed building. You have injured Mr. Biases. You have Mr. Martin, Indiana, Illinois, Missouri, hospital application, Millennium Company, Acme Freight, Acme by itself. Not too bad, I don't think you all. Team, question, Driver, El Paso, State of Texas, Mr. Sanchez's switched physically emergency. So pretty basic. And we'll start in the middle. And this is going to be 184, five minutes. Okay, just to make sure you're, you're certain, I just want to make sure that we get this right. He never told you that he injured his head though. Isn't that right? No, he told me it was his neck and he couldn't come back, drive back. Besides Mr. Bias telling you that he hit a hole or a bump on the road, did he say anything else to you about the driving with Mr. Martin on that trip? No, just that. Okay, did he tell you where the bump or the hole in the road was as far as what state they were in or where it was? I think it was in Indiana, Illinois. Okay, but not in Missouri. Indiana, Missouri. I don't remember if it was Indiana, Missouri or Indiana, Illinois. Okay, and you've seen Mr. Martin since he got out of the hospital, correct? I saw him when he went to go make an application to work where I was working. Okay, did he work where you were working? No. Do you know where he's working now? Millennium Company. And what does he do for Millennium Company? Do you know? He's driving. He's a driver. And you actually worked with him at Acme Freight after he got out of the hospital. Is that right? There at with Acme? Yes, sir. With Acme. You worked with him in Acme? Yes. And while he was driving with you at Acme, did he have any problems with driving? I saw that he was driving well, and that's why I answered the company when they asked me and I saw that he was driving well. Okay, were you aware that Mr. Martin did not want to drive by himself but wanted a team member? No, he wanted to be with me as a team. Okay, were, listen to my question, okay? Were you aware that Mr. Martin refused to work by himself after he came back and wanted to be on a team? No. He wanted to be with you, you're saying though, correct? He was looking for a team, not with me, but as a team. For, and when he was driving with you, after he came back to work, everything was fine. He was driving okay as far as you could tell. He drove well. Okay. Were you aware of the fact that Mr. Martin actually quit employment with Acme Freight? No. Now, you're telling me that you were fired from Acme Freight. Is that right? Yes. Okay. There's a document in front of you that's marked as Exhibit 1. Do you see that with me? Yes. Take a look at that. All right, that document seems to indicate that someone at Acme Freight believed that you were working somewhere else. At the same time, you were working for Acme Freight, driving a truck. Yes. Was that your understanding of what they told you? Yes. How did they obtain the information that you were working somewhere else? Do you know who told them that? I told them, prove it. Pull a check stub. And? Well, listen to my question. I understand that. My question is a little bit more involved than that, is how did Acme find out that you would have been working somewhere else in the first place? Do you know? They didn't tell me a thing. Okay, you weren't working somewhere else, right? I cannot. Okay, and you'd been working there for four and a half years, right? Yes. And doing, doing a good job? Yes. No one ever complained about your work before? Right? No. Okay. And then suddenly someone reports that you're working somewhere else. Yes. Okay. And you don't have any idea who it was that reported that you were working someplace else. I asked them. And what did they tell you? They didn't tell me anything. Okay. So to this day, you don't know who told Acme that you were working somewhere else? No. Now, if we know of a person that told Acme you were working somewhere else, that person was lying to Acme. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Do you know if that person was Mr. Martin that told Acme? No. You don't know who it would have been that told Acme? No. 
Okay, but you do understand that if you were working somewhere else at the same time you were working at Acme, that would be a reason that you would lose your job. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, and the company really has no choice then, do they? Yes. Okay, now Mr. Vias seemed to indicate to you that he had to drive the truck from somewhere outside the state of Texas back into El Paso because of Mr. Sanchez's sore neck. Is that right? Yes. And that occurred while Mr. Martin was supposed to have been driving the truck. Is that right? Yes. Okay, did Mr. Vias indicate to you where they were, in which state they were? They were when Mr. Vias had to take over driving responsibilities for Mr. Martin? Yes, I think Vias was driving to where it was, where they were to be switched out, and it was Indiana. Okay, so Mr. Vias had to drive from Indiana back to El Paso, is that right? Back here, yes. Back here, yes. And in order to do that, if Mr. Martin was not able to, and so you have Texas is TE or TX, TX, okay, Texas. You have um, supposed, disposed, come back D, supposed, you have Responsibilities, you all, is S-P-O-N-L-T, come back, final S. You have, pretty basic, you all, not too bad. Um, El Paso, I would just throw E-P with an asterisk, maybe it's already in there, yes. And you have, at the same time, as T long A M T at the same time. Uh, somewhere else is S where else? No. No. Okay, but I don't know why you can't do S-W-R-E-L-S -E for somewhere else. Uh, you have, do you understand? D long U D and Z, and I'm saying ACME, A-C-M-E, ACME. You have uh, freight, F-R long A-T, freight. You have um, application is P-L-I-X with an asterisk. Injure is J long U-R, come back D. In your comeback D, sorry. And this will be at 190, you all, for five minutes. Okay, just to make sure you're, you're certain, I want to make sure that we get this right. He never told you that he injured his head, though. Isn't that right? No, he told me it was his neck and he couldn't come back, drive back. Besides Mr. Bias mm -hmm. telling you that he hit a hole or a bump on the road. Did he say anything else to you about the driving with Mr. Martin on that trip? No, just that. Okay, did he tell you where the bump or the hole in the road was? As far as what state they were in or where it was? I think it was in Indiana, Illinois. Okay, but not in Missouri. Indiana, Missouri? I don't remember if it was Indiana, Missouri or Indiana, Illinois. Okay. And you've seen Mr. Martin since he got out of the hospital, correct? I saw him when he went to go make an application to work where I was working. Okay, did he work where you were working? No. Do you know where he's working now? Millennium Company. And what does he do for Millennium Company? Do you know? He's driving. He's a driver. And you actually worked with him at Acme Freight after he got out of the hospital. Is that right? There at, with Acme? Yes, sir, with Acme. You worked with him in Acme. Yes. And while he was driving with you at Acme, did he have any problems with driving? I saw that he was driving well, and that's why I answered the company when they asked me, and I saw that he was driving well. Okay. Were you aware that Mr. Martin did not want to drive by himself, but wanted a team member? No, he wanted to be with me as a team. Okay. Were... Listen to my question, okay? Were you aware that Mr. Martin refused to work by himself after he came back and wanted to be on a team? No. He wanted to be with you, you're saying though, correct? He was looking for a team, not with me, but as a team. All right. And when he was driving with you after he came back to work, everything was fine. He was driving okay as far as you could tell? He drove well. Okay. Were you aware of the fact that Mr. Martin actually quit employment with Acme Freight? No. Now, you're telling me that you were fired from Acme Freight. Is that right? Yes. Okay. There's a document in front of you that's marked as Exhibit 1. Do you see that with me? Yes. Take a look at that. All right. That document seems to indicate that someone at Acme Freight believed that you were working somewhere else at the same time you were working for Acme Freight, driving a truck. 
Yes. Was that your understanding of what they told you? Yes. How did they obtain the information that you were working somewhere else? Do you know who told them that? I told them, prove it. Pull a check stub. Okay, well, listen to my question. I understand that. My question is a little bit more involved than that, is how did ACME find out that you would have been working somewhere else in the first place? Do you know? They didn't tell me a thing. Okay, you weren't working somewhere else, right? I cannot. Okay. And you'd been working there for four and a half years, right? Yes. Doing, doing a good job? Yes. No one ever complained about your work before? No. Okay. And then suddenly someone reports that you're working somewhere else. Yes. Okay. And you don't have any idea who it was that reported <laughs> that you worked someplace else? I asked them. And what did they tell you? They didn't tell me anything. Okay. So to this day, you don't know who told Acme that you were working somewhere else? No. And now if we know of a person that told Acme you were working somewhere else, that person was lying to Acme. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Do you know if that person was Mr. Martin that told Acme? No. You don't know who it would have been that told Acme? No. Okay. But you do understand that if you were working somewhere else at the same time you were working at Acme, that would be a reason that you would lose your job. Yes. 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 Okay. And the company really has no choice then, do they? Yes. Okay. Now, Mr. Weiss seemed to indicate to you that he had to drive the truck from somewhere outside the state of Texas back into El Paso because of Mr. Sanchez's sore neck. Is that right? Yes. And that occurred while Mr. Martin was supposed to have been driving the truck. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Did Mr. Weiss indicate to you where they were, in which state they were, they were when Mr. Weiss had to take over driving responsibilities for Mr. Martin? Yes. I think Weiss was driving to where it was, where they were to be switched out, and it was Indiana. Okay, so Mr. Vias had to drive from Indiana back to El Paso, is that right? Back here, yes. Back here, yes, and in order to do that, if Mr. Martin was not able to physically drive, that would cause Mr. Vias to go over on his hours, is that right? A lot. Okay, and certainly you'd agree that that's a safety issue, isn't it? Yes. But from time to time, drivers have to go over hours because they're faced with an emergency, is that right? An hour, an hour and a half, but not. Okay, well, so we have some words that, bless you, Michelle. Some words that come out. Um, you have. And a half is NAF, N-A-F, and a half. You have, um, in order is N-O-R-D. In O R D, you have physically is physical is F L D, emergency is M R J. Um, at the same time, I think I wrote that taint. And then let me look up somewhere else. I'm thinking that's a brief. And then this next one will be at 200. S W L S. Mm -mm. It's just somewhere, but not else. But you all, you somewhere is S W R. Put the else in there. No, it doesn't come out as anything. And this is going to be two hundred, and um, for five minutes, you all. Okay, just to make sure you're you're certain, I want to make sure that we get this right. He never told you that he injured his head, though. Isn't that right? No, he told me it was his neck, and he couldn't come back. Drive back. Besides Mr. Vias telling you that he hit a hole or a bump on the road, did he say anything else to you about the driving with Mr. Martin on that trip? No, just that. Okay, did he tell you where the bump or the hole in the road was as far as what state they were in or where it was? I think it was in Indiana, Illinois. Okay, but not in Missouri. Indiana, Missouri? I don't remember if it was Indiana, Missouri or Indiana, Illinois. Okay, and you've seen Mr. Martin since he got out of the hospital, correct? I saw him when he went to go make an application to work where I was working. And, okay, did he work where you were working? No. Do you know where he's working now? Millennium Company. And what does he do for Millennium Company, do you know? He's driving, he's a driver. And you actually worked with him at Acme Freight after he got out of the hospital, is that right? There at with Acme? Yes, or with Acme. You worked with him in Acme. Yes. And while he was driving with you at Acme, did he have any problems with driving? I saw that he was driving well, and that's what 
I answered the company when they asked me and I saw that he was driving well. Okay. Were you aware that Mr. Martin did not want to drive by himself but wanted a team member? No, he wanted to be a team with me as a team. Okay, were, listen to my question, okay? Were you aware that Mr. Martin refused to work by himself after he came back and wanted to be on a team? No. He wanted to be with you, you're saying though, correct? He was looking for a team. Not with me, but as a team. All right. And when he was driving with you after he came back to work, everything was fine. He was driving okay as far as you could tell. You drove well. Okay. Were you aware of the fact that Mr. Martin actually quit employment with Acme Freight? No. Now you're telling me that you were fired from Acme Freight. Is that right? Yes. Okay. There's a document in front of you that's marked as Exhibit 1. Do you see that with me? Yes. Take a look at that. All right. That document seems to indicate that someone at Acme Freight believed that you were working somewhere else. At the same time, you were working for Acme Freight, driving a truck. Yes. What was your understanding of what they told you? Yes. How did they obtain the information that you were working somewhere else? Do you know who told them that? I told them, prove it. Pull a check stub. Okay, well, listen to my question. I understand that my question is a little bit more involved than that is how did Acme find out that you would have been working somewhere else in the first place? Do you know? They didn't tell me a thing. Okay, you weren't working somewhere else, right? I cannot. Okay, and you'd been working there for four and a half years, right? Yes. Doing, doing a good job? Yes. No one ever complained about your work before, right? No. Okay, and then suddenly someone reports that you're working somewhere else. Yes. Okay, and you don't have any idea who it was that reported that you were working somewhere else. I asked them. And what did they tell you? They didn't tell me anything. Okay, so to this day you don't know who told Acme that you were working somewhere else? No. Now, if we know of a person that told Acme you were working somewhere else, that person was lying to Acme is what you're saying. Yes. Do you know if that person was Mr. Martin that told Acme? No. You don't know who it would have been that told Acme? No. Okay, but you do understand that if you were working somewhere else at the same time you were working at Acme, that would be a reason that you would lose your job. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, and the company really has no choice then, do they? Yes. Okay, now, Mr. Vias seemed to indicate to you that he had to drive the truck from somewhere outside the state of Texas back into El Paso because of Mr. Sanchez's sore neck. Is that right? Yes. And that occurred while Mr. Martin was supposed to have been driving the truck. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Did Mr. Vias indicate to you where they were and what state they were? They were when Mr. Vias had to take over the driving responsibilities from Mr. Martin? Yes. I think Vias was driving to where it was where they were to be switched out, and it was Indiana. Okay, so Mr. Bias had to drive from Indiana back to El Paso, is that right? Back here, yes. Back here, yes. And in order to do that, if Mr. Martin was not able to physically drive, that would cause Mr. Bias to go over on his hours. Is that right? A lot. Okay, and certainly you'd agree that that's a safety issue, isn't it? Yes. But from time to time, drivers have to go over hours because they're faced with that emergency. Is that correct? An hour, an hour and a half, but not two shifts. Not almost two shifts? No. Driving back for that period of time, are you aware of there being any incident in the truck while Mr. Vias was driving the truck from wherever he had to take over for? And so real quickly, a period of time is PRFT, initial PR final FT, and then millennium is millennium. M-I-L-L-E-N-Y-U-M, millennium. And this is good. Oh, don't forget, STATA is S-T-A-O-F with an asterisk for like state of Texas. This is going to be at 210, and then we'll have your test, okay? Okay, just to make sure you're, you're certain. I want to make sure that we get this right. He never told you that he injured his head, though. Isn't that right? No, he told me it was his neck and he couldn't come back, drive back. Besides Mr. Vias telling you that he hit a hole or a bump on the road, did he say anything else to you about the driving with Mr. Martin on that trip? No, just that. Okay, did he tell you where the bump or the hole in the road was as, as far as what state they were in or where it was? I think it was Indiana, Illinois. Okay, but not in Missouri. Indiana, Missouri? I don't remember if it was Indiana, Missouri or Indiana, Illinois. Okay. 
And you've seen Mr. Martin since he got out of the hospital, correct? I saw him when he went to go make an application to work where I was working. Okay, did he work where you were working? No. Do you know where he's working now? Millennium Company. And what does he do for Millennium Company? Do you know? He's driving. He's a driver. And you actually worked with him at Acme Freight after he got out of the hospital. Is that right? There at with Acme? Yes, sir, with Acme. You worked with him in Acme. Yes. And while he was driving with you at Acme, did he have any problems with driving? I saw that he was driving well, and that's why I answered the company when they asked me, and I saw that he was driving well. Okay, were you aware that Mr. Martin did not want to drive by himself, but wanted a team member? No, he wanted to be with me as a team. Okay, were, listen to my question, okay? Were you aware that Mr. Martin refused to work by himself after he came back and wanted to be on a team? No. He wanted to be with you, you're saying though, correct? He was looking for a team, not with me, but as a team. And when he was driving with you, after he came back to work, everything was fine. He was driving okay as far as you could tell. He drove well. Okay, were you aware of the fact that Mr. Martin actually quit employment with Acme Freight? No. Now, you're telling me that you were fired from Acme Freight. Is that right? Yes. Okay. There's a document in front of you that's marked as Exhibit 1. Do you see that with me? Yes. Take a look at that. All right. That document seems to indicate that someone at Acme Freight believed that you were working somewhere else at the same time you were working for Acme Freight, driving a truck. Yes. Was that your understanding of what they told you? Yes. How did they obtain the information that you were working somewhere else? Do you know who told them that? I told them, prove it, pull a check stub. Okay, well listen to my question, I understand that. My question is a little bit more involved than that, is how did Acme find out that you would have been working somewhere else in the first place? Do you know? They didn't tell me a thing. Okay, you weren't working somewhere else, right? I cannot. Okay, and you'd been working there for four and a half years, right? Yes. Doing, doing a good job? Yes. No one ever complained about your work before, right? No. Okay, and then suddenly someone reports that you're working somewhere else. Yes. Okay, and you don't have any idea who it was that reported that you were working someplace else. I asked them. And what did they tell you? They didn't tell me anything. Okay, so to this day you don't know who told you that or told Acme that you were working somewhere else? No. Now, if we know of a person that told Acme you were working somewhere else, that person was lying to Acme, is that what you're saying? Yes. Do you know if that person was Mr. Martin that told Acme? No. You don't know who it would have been that told Acme? No. Okay, but you do understand that if you were working somewhere else at the same time you were working at Acme, that would be a reason that you would lose your job. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, and the company really has no choice then, do they? Yes. Okay, now, Mr. Vice seemed to indicate to you that he had to drive the truck from somewhere outside the state of Texas back into El Paso because of Mr. Sanchez's sword neck. Is that right? Yes. And that occurred while Mr. Martin was supposed to have been driving the truck. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Did Mr. Vias indicate to you where they were and which state they were? They were when Mr. Vias had to take over driving responsibilities from Mr. Martin. Yes. I think Vias was driving to where it was, where they were to be switched out, and it was Indiana. Okay. So Mr. Vias had to drive from Indiana back to El Paso. Is that right? Back here, yes. Back here, yes. And in order to do that, if Mr. Martin was not able to physically drive, that would cause Mr. Vice to go over on his hours, is that right? A lot. Okay, and certainly you'd agree that that's a safety issue, isn't it? Yes. But from time to time, drivers have to go over hours because they're faced with an emergency, is that correct? An hour, an hour and a half, but not two shifts. Not almost two shifts, no. Driving back for that period of time, are you aware of there being any incident in the truck while Mr. Vice was driving? the truck from wherever he had to take over for Mr. Martin back to El Paso. I don't know. So Okay, so presuming that nothing happened, thank goodness it worked out all right. You'd agree with that? Well, yes. Now, you were mentioning that when you were driving with Mr. Martin, did the company, did the company actually give you a warning about Mr. Martin? No. Okay, they just asked you to. Okay, and so we'll get ready for your test, you all. Okay, so we have your 225, sorry, 200 Q&A number one. You have David Wayne Brown, Oaks Mobile Home Park, Dallas, Billy Joe Matz, Dayton Circle, Mary Bright, Bob James, Joe, Joe Hasty, Bob's Tree Service, Larry Munson, Kim, Little Tree Road.
And so I think Dallas is S D A L S D L A S for Dallas. Okay. This is going to be your test number one, 200 for five minutes. Um, and it starts at the uh, very beginning. What's your full name, please? David Wayne Brown. David Wayne Brown. Yes. What's your date of birth? April 13, 1955. And your address, please? Right now, it's currently 85 Oaks Mobile Home Park. Oaks? Oaks. O-A-K-E-S. What town is that in? It would be in Dallas. What's your phone number? 555-2569. Is that your number or someone else's? That's my number. Is this a mobile home that you live in? Yes. Do you own it? Yes. Who do you live with? It's rented. Billy Joe Max. Who do you live with? Billy Joe Max. I'm sorry. I thought you were telling me you rented from him. No, sir. Is Billy Joe Matz a man or a woman? A woman. Are you married to her? No, sir. Does anyone else live with you? No, sir. Nobody else lives there. How long have you lived there? Since January. Something around there. Something around January. Of this year? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, I'm sorry. Where did you live in February of 1989, specifically February 3, 1989? I was staying at my mom's house then. That would be on Dayton Circle. What is your mother's name? Mary Bright. Mary? Bright. B-R-I-G-H-T. What is her address now? Same address. Is that 24 Dayton Circle? Right. And in February of 1989, when you were living there with your mom? Okay. When you were talking about dates, I won't be able to understand what dates I said on what because... I mean, you know, in February, I know I was living in there, but I was in and out of there. Of your mother's house, you mean? Yes. I only stayed there like a short period of time or something like that. So in other words, I was there in February. So I don't know exactly what days or whatever like that. Were you between residences? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Well, as of that day, the day of this accident, did you have your clothes at your mother's house? Yes, I did. And your whatever else you owned? Yes, I did. And you were staying there with your mother? Yes. And as of that day, the day of the accident, did anyone else live at that address? No, just my mother. You and your mother. Right. What's your mother's phone number? It was, still is, 262, wait a minute. No, it isn't, it's 622. 622. Yeah, she had it changed. 1035. 1035. Was your mother home when this happened? No, she wasn't. Where was she? She was at the hospital. What was she doing there? She had a nervous condition and had to go into the hospital. Do you know how long she was in the hospital? Seven weeks. Seven weeks. Yes, sir. So you were living at the house yourself then? Right. By yourself? Right. Was she treated for depression or mental illness? Yeah, something like that. All right. So when this accident happened, had she been gone for quite some time? Yeah. Before, I went there and stayed because there was nobody at the house. She was already in the hospital. That's why I say when there was nobody home there. I stayed there some of the time. All right. So she wasn't there at least for several weeks before this accident. Well, a couple weeks. Okay. So you were there all by yourself? Right. Where did you work at that time? We worked for ourselves. What did you do? Cut trees. We had a little tree company. When you say we, who is that? That would be Bob and James. And Joe helped us. Joe. Who is Joe? Just Joe Hasty, a guy that worked with us. A worker? Yes. Did the tree company have a name? Bob's Tree Service. All right. Was this an everyday job that you did? Yes, sir. That's yes. Yes. When you say you cut trees now, what do you mean by that? Do you cut them for lumber mills or what? No, we do it for the public, for the clearing of the yards, boxing them up. All right. Was that your only job at this time? Yes. How long have you known Larry Munson? Since 81, 82. How did you meet him? He lived, I met him through his sister, which was Kim. They lived next to me. So you were neighbors? He lived on, I wasn't neighbors with him. I was neighbors with Bob and Kim. Okay, and where did they live at that time, or where did you live? I lived on Little Tree Road. He lived across it in another development. Were you friends? Yes. Did you do things together? Yes, sir. What sort of things did you and Larry do together? Mostly work. Did you and Larry ever go out together socially? Yes, sir. Did you ever drink together? Yes. Do you remember the night this accident happened? Yes. Do you know the date? <laughs> no, I couldn't tell you the exact date. Do you know what day of the week it was? No, not now. Do you know whether that day, whether you worked that day? 
No, not that day. I didn't. Do you know why you didn't work? Was it just an off day? Yeah, we had nothing to do. No work to do. No work to do that day. So what did you do that day? Mostly just sleep, watched television, and kicked back. What about Larry? Do you know if Larry worked that day? No, I wasn't with him that day. You were later? Yeah, when he came up to the house. Did you talk to Larry on the telephone or any other time before he got to your house? No, it was, it was just out of... And then we have your second 200 Q&A, Monticello, Monticello Apartments, City of Arlington, Texas, Lisa Dees, Officer Sandoval, East Rogers, Center Street, Oldsmobile, Texas, Missouri, State of Missouri. And Missouri is MI twice with an asterisk. How would you abbreviate Missouri? MS? No. MO. Oh, MO. Yeah. Thank you. Missouri is MO twice with an asterisk, okay? This is 200 Q&A number two for five minutes, and it starts in the middle. You had not received any information that the vehicle was stolen. No, sir. And you also did not receive permission to go on this particular piece of property. That's correct, sir. Officer, this parking lot, did the public have access to this parking lot? Yes, sir, they do. And there are several exits, entrances to the parking lot. There's approximately three entrances and exits to the parking lot. So when defense counsel refers to this private property, do you understand that to be the same way as private property of a homeowner or someone of that nature? Not even a homeowner, sir, no. And are you familiar with the Monticello apartment complex? Yes, sir, I am. How are you familiar with that apartment complex? We had a lot of calls of drunk people being in cars, domestics. I recall a murder suspect being at that location also. Is there any kind of illegal activity that takes place at this apartment complex on a regular basis? Officer, as a result of this investigation, did you determine whether or not any of the occupants of that vehicle lived at the complex? She advised that her grandma lived at that complex. Was that ever verified? No, sir. But none of the occupants themselves lived at that complex. That I recall, no, sir. Thank you. Private property or public property? Private property? The apartment complex? Yes. Mont Monticello Apartments, they are residences, ap residence apartments, are they not? Yes, sir. Where people live? Yes, sir. It's where their homes are? Yes, sir. Not the parking lot of a gas station or a grocery store, is it? Are you saying public property? And insofar as that parking lot is concerned, it is the parking lot for people who reside there. Would you agree with that? Yes, sir, I would agree. All right. How are you employed, officer? Police officer for the city of Arlington, Texas. And were you so employed on April 18th, 1988? Yes, sir. And referring your attention specifically to about eight o'clock that evening, did you take part in the arrest of an individual by the name of Lisa Dees for possession of marijuana? Yes, sir. Will you tell us what you observed at that time at the Monticello apartment complex? Myself and Officer Sandoval were on routine patrol at 8 o'clock that evening on East Rogers and Center Street. We noticed a vehicle on the south side of the Monticello Apartments, which was parked and had four occupants in it. This is a location where we've had incidents before with a lot of loitering in the parking lot, a lot of complaints from people that live there. We drove into the parking lot. As we drove behind the particular vehicle, we saw the subjects inside were starting to make movements all about the vehicle. Describe what you mean by movements. Well, furtive type movements under the seats. Seemed like the two back passengers were going down as if they were going under the seat. That's when my partner exited our vehicle and approached the vehicle from the passenger side. What did you do? I parked the car and secured it. I went around to the driver's side. I'm not aware if they were aware I was over there at that time. Was there a time gap from the time Officer Sandoval approached and the time that you did? Just a couple of seconds. Okay. When I got up to the door by that time that he smelled the odor of marijuana, and right as I approached the driver's side, I saw a white female. Do you see that white female in the courtroom today? Yes, sir. Would you point her out? To your left in a black tank top. And when you approached the defendant, what did you notice her doing? I noticed her shove something down by her waistband. Was she still seated behind the wheel at this time? She was, and her attention was drawn towards Officer Sandoval's direction, the occupant on the passenger's side. So she would be looking to her right when you approach from the left hand? Correct. 
What did you do? I asked her to get out of the vehicle. Officer Sandoval was having a white male passenger get out of the other side of the vehicle. When she got out of the vehicle, <clears throat> for my safety and the purpose that we had already smelled the odor of marijuana, I smelled as she exited the vehicle, I asked her what she had stuck down in her waistband. What did she respond? What did she say when you asked her? She told me rolling papers. And what are <laughs> rolling papers? Rolling papers are commonly used for rolling marijuana cigarettes and rarely used for just plain tobacco cigarettes. What happened next? I asked her for the rolling papers. And did she give them to you? She would not. How did you eventually get them from her? I demanded her about twice. Finally, she relinquished them. And what did you discover when she gave them to you? What she pulled out was a clear plastic baggie containing a green leafy substance, which I believed to be marijuana, and wrapped it in the plastic baggie was actually a package of rolling papers. It was not inside the plastic baggie as the marijuana was, but it was wrapped up in between. Let me just back you up to the time that you... I believe it was Officer Sandoval that first noticed this Oldsmobile. Did you notice whether or not the vehicle had a license tag? No, it didn't on front. Is that a violation of the law? It is in Texas. When we got around to the back of the vehicle, we noticed that it was a Missouri license plate. The state of Missouri does, does require you, ha you have two license plates, one on the front, one on the back. Did it have a current validation sticker? No, it didn't. Now, would... Okay, so we'll get ready for your um, 180 number one. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so you have 180 number one, Damani, Tom Harley, Craigmont Conservatory of Music. And this is going to be 180 Q&A number one, and it starts in the middle for five minutes, you all. Do you know if he did any of the construction work himself? No, he didn't. Do you know if he had a crew working for him? Yes, I think so. Is it someone that he works with regularly? I'm not sure. At the very bottom of the page where it says personal observations, could you read what you wrote under that? I wrote, this was one of the best days ever because it's my mom's birthday. Do you remember anything about your mom's birthday? No, not really. Do you remember how old she was that day? No. Do you know why the next entry after that one has no date on it? I don't know. I guess I forgot to write it. Does what you list doing on that day look like a typical Sunday to you? Yes, it does. Now, Diamani, do you, you do understand that you are under oath here to tell the truth, don't you? Yes, I do. Do you know how long your parents have been in financial debt? I don't know. I'm not sure. When you wrote in your journal that your parents were in a financial mess, what did you mean by that? They owe people money that they don't have. Did you notice a change in your dad between the time before the accident and after the accident? Yes, I did. Can you tell what kind of changes you noticed about your dad? After the accident, he complained a lot more. What did he complain more about? He was always saying how much his back hurt and talking about the pain in his back. What did he complain about before the accident? He would complain about the money pressure, but not much else. Did it seem to you like the financial pressure was less after the accident? He just didn't talk about it that much after the accident. He talked more about the pain he had. Did your dad ever tell you that he expected to get money as a result of the accident? No, but I heard him talking on the phone to somebody about it. Do you remember what he said to who and what he said? I don't know who it was. What do you recall him saying? Just that he was going to sue and he thought he could get a million dollars. But you don't remember who your dad was talking to when he said that? 
No, I don't remember. Did your dad ever discuss his financial problems with you? Since we started trying to get out of debt, he would talk about it with us. Did he ever tell you that he had a plan as to how he was going to get out of debt? No. Now, going to the top of the next page of your journal, it states that you take piano lessons. Do you see that, Damani? Yes. How old were you when you started taking piano lessons? I don't remember. How many piano teachers have you had? Three. Do you remember the names of any of your teachers? No. Are you currently taking piano lessons, Diamani? Yes, I am. What is the name of the teacher you take lessons from now? Tom Harley. How often do you practice the piano, Diamani? Almost every day. How long are you supposed to practice each day? An hour. Do you have a special chair you sit in when you play the piano? No, I just sit on the bench that's in there. Does your piano teacher instruct you on the correct hand position? Yes, he does. Does he tell you that you have to sit a certain way? Yes. What is the correct sitting position for the piano? You have to sit up straight. Do you ever feel any pain when you play the piano since the accident? Sometimes my back hurts. Do you know what is causing your back to hurt? It's from the accident. Have you ever complained to your piano teacher about the pain? No, I haven't. Have you ever talked to your doctor about how your back hurts when you play the piano? No, I just say I'm in pain. Have you talked to your mother about your back hurting when you play the piano? No. Why haven't you mentioned it to your mother, Diamani? Because it doesn't hurt me all the time. Did your back ever bother you when you played piano before the accident? No. Are you the only one in your family who plays the piano? Yes. When do you have your next lesson? I go every Thursday at 12.15. Do you take lessons at your home or at your teacher's house? I take them at the Craigmont Conservatory of Music. How long does a lesson usually last? 45 minutes. Since the accident, have you ever had to stop practicing because your back was bothering you? No. At its worst, on a scale of 1 to 10, what is the highest amount of pain you have felt while playing the piano since the time of the accident? Maybe a 5. Do you feel a lot of worry, Diamani, about your family being in debt? Yes. When your dad talks to you about being in debt, how does that make you feel? I don't know. Does it make you feel worried to hear him complain about money? I. And then you have your 180 number 2, Marion, Iowa, Star County, Washington, Collins Avenue, Loeffler Company, Mr. Blackman, Plaintiff's Exhibit, Exhibit 7, Mr. Newberry, Plaintiff's Exhibit 8, Plaintiff's Exhibit 9, Plaintiff's Exhibit 10, and Bulkman. And this is 180 number 2, starts in the middle for five minutes. You are one of the plaintiffs in this action. I am what? Are you one of the plaintiffs in this action? That is right, I am. Please speak loudly so we can hear. How old are you? I am 38. And where were you born? I was born in Marion, Iowa. How old were you when you moved to Stark County? I was nine years old. Where do you live now? I live on Washington and Collins Avenue. When did you begin working at oil stations in Star County? That was three years ago. And have you worked in and about oil stations since that time? With the exception of a couple of months. I see. Has most of the time been spent working for Loeffler Company? That is right. I have been with them for all but three months of that time. When did you go out to this station that was involved in the explosion? Exactly two years ago today. And at that time you went to work for what man? Mr. Blackman was in charge. Then did there come a time when you took this station over yourself on your own? The following spring, March. In March you took over the station to operate it? That's right. Can you tell us who owns the land there? Mr. Blackman. And does Mr. Blackman lease this land to anyone? Does what? Does Mr. Blackman lease this land to anyone? The land the station is on, I suppose, is in my lease. I imagine it is. Who owns the equipment out there at the station? The Loeffler Company. I will show you Plaintiff's Exhibit 7. Is that your signature? It is. And is that the signature of Mr. Newberry, representative of Loeffler Company? That is right. What would you call that exhibit? That is called a customer's equipment lease. How much do you pay the Loeffler Company a year for the lease of that equipment? 
I don't know as I pay anything. What does it say on the equipment lease? Oh, I know what you mean. It's one of those legal-like documents, one of those dollar-a-year leases. I pay a dollar on the lease, that is all. I paid it not so very long ago. And the original lease has been continued and renewed and kept in effect ever since you took over. That's right. Showing you plaintiff's exhibit eight. Is that your signature? That is my signature. And is the other one the signature of Mr. Newberry of the Loeffler Company? That is his signature. Is this agreement known as a reseller's contract? That is right. Do you know if this contract is in force and effect at the present time? I do. It is now in effect. Now, I will show you an agreement. This is Plaintiff's Exhibit 9. Is that your signature on there? Yes. And is the other one that of Mr. Blackman? Correct. Do you know if this is a form that was prepared by the Loeffler Company? That is right. Did you purchase petroleum products only at the station? That is right. When you made your checks out to pay for the gas and oil that you purchased, tell the jury who you made the checks payable to. Loeffler Company. In other words, if you were to purchase 800 or 600 gallons of gas, you would make your check out to Loeffler Company? Loeffler Company. Are the underground tanks that are in question and the other equipment of the station all owned by Loeffler. That is correct. There are signs at the station that have been put up, are there? Yes, advertising signs, yes. Who owns those signs? The company. Do you mean Loeffler Company? Yes. And any other kind of advertising? Yes, some posters. Where do you get the material from? Mail. From where? From the home office. I am showing you Plaintiff's Exhibit 10. Is that an ad which was sent to you from their home office? That came just recently, about a month ago. What do you do with the various advertising that is sent to you? I put them up, some on the outside of the building and some on the inside, on the wall. Do you handle any tires at the station? I handle tires, but I don't handle them at the station where the explosion was. I sell them, sell them at another station. Who sends you those tires? Same company, Loeffler Company. Do you handle accessories? I do. Who sent you spark plugs if you have them? Yes, spark plugs. I can't remember the man's name that used to be there. He was the bulk man when I got them. Do you ever, or have you ever, strike that? Have you ever been requested to attend sales meetings of the company? Meetings for their representatives? Yes, I am asked to. Do you know who owns the air compressor that was in that building before the explosion? Who owns the compressor? I really don't know if it's owned or belongs to Blackman or the company. I don't know which of them owns it. I notice on the customer's equipment lease, they have one air compressor. And do you or did you have one compressor? That is right, one. Is that an automatic compressor? Right, automatic. In other words, it is one that... Okay, you all, so that concludes our Q&As. Uh, have a great day. Type them up, you all.